Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off with a weird one. We're talking about NES emulation on iOS with Bimmy. And recently, Bimmy launched on the App Store. It was priced at 99 cents. And then it was free, and then it was taken down. Some people were wondering if Nintendo took it down. Some people were wondering if Apple took it down. And it turns out that neither was the case. The developer took it down. So over on the Mac Rumors forums, the developer of Bimmy says, I'm so sorry, everyone. I removed the app out of fear. No one reached out to me, pressuring me to remove it, but I'd rather not have the risk. My only question is, if this is the case, why did they even submit it in the first place? So either way, if you are curious about this one, it is on GitHub. It's called NES Emu iOS. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. It's 100% free and open source. And speaking about free and open source, next up we're talking about PS1 emulation on PC with DuckStation. And DuckStation just got a brand new update. Now, DuckStation does get updated quite frequently. It's on a rolling release schedule, and the developer is quite active. Anyways, in this version, we've got a whole bunch of bug fixes, performance improvements, optimizations, and even more. The list is massive. And we can see here that yesterday was the latest generation of all of these different versions. However, unfortunately, at least at the time of filming, none of these updates apply to the Android version. The last time this was updated was at the end of January. And even taking a quick peek at the DuckStation website, I don't see an updated pre-built APK at all. But with that being said, I'd argue the Android version is in a pretty good state to begin with anyways. Let me know your thoughts about DuckStation in the comments below. Now, some of those updates for DuckStation were translations, and next up we're talking about game translations here with a new video on YouTube. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. It's called Monthly Game Fan Translations Recap, March 2024. Now we've covered some of these translations in previous videos, like Game Boy Wars, but if you wanted to see them all in one place, feel free to check out this video. Moving on, and we're talking about Play Night, a free and open source video game library manager with one simple goal, to subscribe to Mr. Sujano or to provide a unified interface for all of your games, and Play Night just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, version 10.33 is the latest update. And I would argue this is more of a maintenance update. I mean, we've got a bunch of bug fixes, including fixing the background music that was starting from scratch instead of resuming when exiting a game. They've updated the emulator profiles, and they've updated the WebView library. Play Night does work with Steam, Epic, GOG, and even more. And if you wanted to check it out, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. But moving on, and next up, we're talking about retro gaming on Linux and the Steam Deck with Retro Deck. And Retro Deck just got a brand new update as well. Now, we've talked about this update before when it was in beta, and now it's been pushed to the main line. So Retro Deck version 0.8.0b is the latest update. All the emulators and engines are updated to their latest version. ESDE has been updated to version 3.0.1. RPCS3 is now running via shortcut. The standalone version of Citra has been removed, but they say it's available through Ponzu. Ponzu has been added, and they say check the wiki if interested in this preservational function. And no surprise here, they've also removed the Nintendo Switch emulator Yuzu, but they have replaced it with Ryujinx. They've also added in PS Vita emulation with Vita 3K, and also the standalone version of MAME. We in GameCube emulation with Dolphin now has enabled Gyro, and they've added Steam controller layouts for PS4 and PS5. And we've got a whole bunch of other improvements. If you are curious about Retro Deck and wanted to learn more about it, I'll drop a link to their site in the description below and feel free to check it out. They're also available over on Flathub. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo Virtual Boy emulation on the Apple Vision Pro, because apparently, yes, that's going to become a thing. Adam Gastineau says, I'm working on my Virtual Boy emulator for the Vision Pro. I've run into some strange issues where the emulator is not performing deterministically, which it should, specifically on Vision. 
I have to track down some kind of memory bug that may be in the compiler that I introduced. So my question to you is, do you have a Vision Pro? And if you do, would you play Virtual Boy games on it? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on, and we're talking about the Nintendo Switch flash cart, the MIG Switch, and it appears that some people who have ordered them have not received them. Unfortunately for MIG Switch, some of those people are pretty big names in the scene, including RGT85, Spawnwave, and also Modern Vintage Gamer. The kicker here is that RGT85 ordered this at the beginning of January, and they're order number 304. It's not like they just ordered this a couple of weeks ago. Now, if I'm not mistaken, RGT85 ordered his MIG Switch from modded hardware, and there are reports out there of people receiving their MIG Switch from that same place. And it seems like RGT85, Spawnwave, and Modern Vintage Gamer are not alone here. There are some other people who have not received it yet. And some people are putting pressure and emailing MIG Switch and trying to figure out what exactly is going on. And here is MIG Switch's response. We will put more pressure on them, and them being modded hardware, to at least answer people, even if it is to tell them to wait. We are in a tough seat because we are also slow to deliver all the orders so the blame is partially on us but we answer everyone quickly. So at this point in time, it doesn't necessarily seem like RGT85 has been necessarily scammed, but at the same time here, a delay of a number of months is kind of crazy. On a side note here, if this is real, and we've talked about this one in a previous video, Unlock Switch says we're happy to confirm that it will be very appealing. The expected price for end customers will be approximately 39 USD. And for reference, this is a clone of the MIG Switch. I mean, Unlock Switch flat out says, yes, we have hacked and cloned the MIG Switch. Today we are improving it and will present our evolution to you shortly. It is 100% compatible with all Nintendo Switch consoles up to version 18.0.0. And they've just announced that samples are on their way, so we may be seeing some YouTube videos in the near future. Next up, this is a quick one, but one you might want to pay attention to if you're a fan of Hades. So you may already be aware that Hades 2 has a Steam Store page. There is no release date just yet for it but they've just added in a brand new box. It says, join the Hades 2 playtest. Unfortunately, I don't have information as to when the playtest is gonna happen or how long it's gonna happen for, but I am on Linux and it did let me register. And speaking about requesting access, next up we're talking about the Witcher 3 Red Kit. For those who may not be aware, this is being marketed as a powerful modding tool for the Witcher 3. It allows you to customize and expand the game as you see fit. And right now on Steam, they have also added in a brand new box here that says join the Witcher 3 Red Kit playtest. So I guess if modding is your thing, feel free to request access and see what you can do. I'll drop a link to this in the description below. And for those of you interested in applying mods as opposed to creating them, well, you might be interested in Nexus mods for the Witcher 3. There's a plethora of mods over there. Next up, we're quickly talking about the PS5 Pro, and we've talked about this one a while back when the specs apparently had leaked online. And the specs were met with a lot of skepticism from people, but IGN confirmed that they were real. Now to add fuel to that fire, Tom Warren has reported that Sony has filed a copyright strike against the PS5 Pro leak video from Moore's Law is Dead. And that's where all of this started from. Now, I don't know about you, but this tells me that yes, the PlayStation 5 Pro is real, and the rumored specs are also probably real. Let me know your thoughts about the PS5 Pro in the comments below and the rumored or possibly real specs as well in the comments below. And speaking about taking stuff down, next up we're talking about Google and a higher enforcement on third-party apps. I'll drop a link to this in the description below. So Team YouTube says, we're strengthening our enforcement on third-party apps that violate YouTube's terms of service, specifically ad-blocking apps. Viewers who are using these third-party apps may experience buffering issues or see the error the following content is not available on this app when trying to watch a video. Now, from my understanding, this could be a big blow to apps like Revanced, who have always seemed to have been one step ahead. I'm wondering if they're going to be one step ahead of this as well. Next up, we're talking about Descent 3, a first-person shooter that was released back in 1999 and the source code for this game has just surfaced online. If you are curious about this one and wanted to learn more about it, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. 
They say here this is the latest version of the Descent 3 source code. This includes the 1.5 patch that Jeff Slutter and Kevin Bentley wrote several years ago. Interestingly enough, Kevin Bentley is the owner of this repository. And on a side note here, they say you can expect some big commits coming soon. Next up, this is a quick one. If you're a budget savvy gamer and you've got a Steam Deck, you might be excited to know that someone is creating a decky plugin for Is There Any Deal? It appears the way the plugin is gonna function on the Steam Deck is by showing you a message in the bottom of the screen. For example, here for Terraria, the lowest price on Indie Gala store is $7.99 as opposed to 975 on Steam. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and one fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.